Oh, come on up, sorry. <laughs> Great. So from, from a giant project with hundreds of people, we're moving to the individual creator. And of course, have a seat. That has changed over the years. Uh, so this is Chad Dickerson. He's CEO Hi, of Etsy, and he was previously CTO. So just yes. very briefly, give the story of how you, how you came. And then what we're really interested in talking about is how things changed, how the, if you like, the governance sure. changed over time. I'll let you, and yeah, I'll interrupt. I so uh, I got a call from, uh, in 2008, I got a call from Katerina Fake, who had uh, made an angel investment in Flickr, um, or had started Flickr and made an angel investment in yeah. Etsy. And uh, she told me, uh, having worked with me in the late 90s at Salon.com, where I was CTO, that she felt like Etsy needed a CTO like me. And so she asked me to go meet with Rob Kalin in Brooklyn. Um, and I lived in the Bay Area at the time. So I, I told Katerina she was crazy, but I would go to Brooklyn and meet with Rob. And there was no, no chance at all that I'd move to New York. And uh, I ended up moving to New York. I was really blown away by Etsy and the mission and the community, which we'll talk about today. Uh, the company was about, uh, I don't know, about 35 people. Um, when I started, they had just moved the skate ramp out of the office. Um, there was a half pipe skate ramp. And I think there was like this much space between this, the ramp and the ceiling, which I never was quite sure how that worked. So it was really kind of a, uh, when I came in as CTO, a very anarchic almost kind of place as a company and the community was also very vocal and, um, and anarchic in, in lots of ways. So I, I spent three years um, really rebuilding the technology infrastructure, um, building a great technology team. I got a lot of people from the West Coast to come out. And uh, in 2011, the short story is the board asked me to be CEO. Right. And then... Very short story. <laughs> lots of things happened. Yes, it was yes. a long story. Um, how many of you here are Etsy users? How many have sold on Etsy? And how many have bought on Etsy? Okay, Excellent. and overall, how big is your community? How many sellers and how many buyers approximately? So the, the last year we closed 2013, uh, 1.35 billion US dollars in sales. So that was 2013. Uh, we have 1.2 million active sellers and those are in 200 countries, basically everywhere around the world. Um, so Etsy is a completely global phenomenon. And how many buyers? Uh, we, have, um, we have about 45 million registered members. Mm -hmm. That includes the sellers plus yeah. all the registered buyers. Okay. Yep. And you take 3.5% of the transactions? Yeah, so 3.5% of transactions on every sale. I think that, um, you know, when we've talked to investors in the past, many of them say they think that's too low. Uh, when, when Esther and I were talking about community earlier and about how, what makes things work, I actually think one of the things that makes Etsy's business work is that at 3.5%, it's just really fair. And uh, that rate's never been raised throughout the history of the company. Mm -hmm. And this is our 10th year in business. Interesting. There are other companies here who take a much larger percentage. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit, and then we'll, we'll do some more questions and so forth. How have the the rules, you know, the sort of the, the community policies changed over the years and talk a little about the process yeah. of, you know, whenever you start a community, the first thing that happens is people join and the second is they complain. Right. And yet people keep joining. So how yes. do you... So, you know, Etsy was, Etsy was founded and still is about the concept of handmade. And as companies grow, uh, especially community-based companies, um, you know, increasingly the community is always worried about, you know, selling out and that sort of thing. And uh, if you look back at the history of Etsy, Etsy started again in 2005. Even in 2006, 2007, there were people who were worried, you know, is Etsy over? So is Etsy over has been this kind of, uh, this kind of drumbeat. Um, and Etsy has continued to grow and more and more people have found success on the platform. More and more of you have found great things to buy, that kind of thing. But in 2013, um, you know, eight years into the business, just two years ago, 
you know, we were starting to notice that, that Etsy wasn't able to take into account all of the really interesting ways that people were making things like 3D printing, mm -hmm. uh, laser etching, CNC, and people were selling those things on Etsy. And, you know, by some people's definition of handmade, that wasn't handmade, but we updated our policies to um, allow for those types mm -hmm. of items to be sold more explicitly, even though they were, were being sold, because we really see it um, as being, you know, mainly about creativity and, uh, not and that's technology. what it's about. I'm sorry. And, and not the actual technical details of how stuff Not always. Is made. And, yeah. you know, we, we went so deep into our hearts and minds about mm -hmm. this policy change. And, you know, we studied the history of making, for example. And one of the things that we discovered is that, for example, uh, when the sewing machine was introduced, there were riots. Um, there was a, a French tailor who had put sewing machines in his shop. And some seamstresses who sewed by hand ransacked his shop and burned it to the ground. You know, no sewing machines. And so I think throughout history, we've seen these big yeah. leaps of progress. And uh, those leaps of progress become commonplace. And so when we were making these decisions, I asked myself, using the sewing machine example, what if we went the other way and we told our Etsy sellers that you are no longer able to use sewing machines? then I would have a riot and you know, Etsy would be burned down right. or something. Uh, so I think in a, in, a, in a world that's moving so quickly, we always have to look forward, but still maintain the essence of what Etsy is, which is about creativity, having an idea, making it yourself. And how many people quit in protest over this clarification of the rules? We, we didn't see any individual or we didn't count individuals who were quitting I think the the overall numbers of people joining Etsy continued to grow and they continue to grow and I think the reason they continue to grow is um, you know Etsy is really the only place uh, on the internet for this type of creative activity yeah. and it's um, I think it's a really fair marketplace okay. so a few questions or if not uh, let me ask you Sure. You're a B Corporation. Can you explain yes. to people who might not know what that is and why you made that change? Sure. So uh, Etsy became a B Corporation in 2012. And the basic concept behind a B Corporation is that you can combine uh, creating a profit with creating social good, that those two things can coexist. And I think for a, a really long time, you know, people have thought of business as um, you know, social good and profit being in opposition. And I think in Etsy's case, the business model, in our mind, you sell something on Etsy, the artist gets 96.5%, Etsy gets 3.5%, the money goes back to communities. It's not a big box retail store, it's not Amazon, it's not taking, you know, the majority back to the mothership. And so we really see Etsy as generating social good. And so the B Corp score is, um, the way we keep track and we're graded along with other companies around the world. It started mostly in the US, but now it's a global phenomenon. Yeah. So what decisions have you made as a B Corp that you might not have made if your investors were really greedy? Yeah. I so, mean, one may be raising the percentage. What else? So this is, there's some profound things and I think there's some, some less than profound things or um, not as profound things. Uh, on the sort of simple level, we started weighing our garbage. And that sounds like, what? Weighing our garbage? Uh, what we found was that um, everyone in the office had these little garbage cans beside their desks. And just for convenience purposes, they were throwing paper and compostables and everything into these, into these garbage cans. So we created these centralized recycling um, facilities inside the office and removed all of the garbage cans. And in one week, we cut our landfill waste by 30%. Mm. And the garbage, the garbage collection area became like the new water cooler. It was where people started to hang out and you know, get in line to compost your apple mm. peels and that kind of thing. Um, I think on a more profound level, and this is something that we're still not satisfied with. We still have a lot of work to do. Um, like many companies uh, over the past year in the U.S., technology companies, we released our diversity report, and B Corp grades you. The B Corp score grades you on diversity in your workforce, not just gender, but racial diversity, 
um, people who are differently abled, all those sorts of things. So we've, um, we have, uh, you can see our report online if you Google Etsy diversity report, 40% um, of our management's women, it needs to be higher. Mm -hmm. um, it's higher than Google's already. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we're not, you know, we, we may be better than most, but yeah. we're not, uh, I can't say we're proud yet. And, you know, we've hired people from, you know, agencies who place people who have mental disabilities and physical mm -hmm. dis disabilities to do work around the office that, um, you know, we were paying other people to do. So we've been able to employ people in the community. So those are just two things. And you can, if you go to bcorporation.net slash Etsy, you can actually see our scorecard. Mm -hmm. So I think transparency is really the most important thing. So it's been rumored that you might go public, and I won't ask you about that because I got warned you're going to ask your lawyer to come up here. So <laughs> what does going public as a B Corp mean? You probably have studied this question. Sure. I think that um, it's basically uncharted territory. So, you know, your guess is as good as mine. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anyone's really seen a, a B Corp go public. Um, I mean, from, from Etsy's standpoint, you know, whatever we do in the future, I think the most important thing is that we want to build a company that's really committed to values and providing uh, good to the community in a real way. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just kind of built into our DNA. And also still good for your investors. Yeah, it's good for our investors. And, and you know, one of the things that drives me crazy when I talk to investors, um, you know, VCs, uh, there are VCs out there who've told us that they wouldn't consider investing in Etsy because we, um, we, we create social good and profit and that we should just focus on profit. And the way we think about it, Etsy makes money because we do good in the world and because people trust us and people trust the brand. So um, I think those VCs, those investors who say those sorts of things over the next 10, 20, 50 years, uh, I think they're going to actually get lower returns. If you think long term, like yes. sending a comment somewhere. Okay, there must be, yes, go ahead. And say who you are, please. Yes. Mm -hmm. Question. Uh, what do you see, and we're all caring about disruption, and I've seen some startups that are doing events for crafts to have the broker, you know, the person selling and the buyer come together. So what types of disruption are you fighting against? Well, what Etsy is really fighting against on a, almost like an ideological level is a world that's increasingly being ruled by price and convenience. So you've got, and you know, many of these are great businesses, you've got everyone trying to deliver diapers just a little bit faster <laughs> or deliver groceries a little bit faster. Um, and what we see is uh, while these things promote instant gratification, we think that ultimately in the long term, they're really dissatisfying. So if you imagine a world where in your neighborhood, there are drones flying around dropping packages, but no one is talking to each other on the street, we think that's a really sad world. So in a weird way, what we're disrupting is we're trying to bring Etsy back to the way the world used to be where you interacted with merchants face to face. Um, a lot of your commerce was commercial or your, com your commerce was in person. And uh, we're trying to, in a world that's getting increasingly dehumanized, bring more humanity back to commerce. So there's, there's a lot of writing now about how people get much more genuine pleasure long term by buying experiences rather than by buying yes. things. But you could argue perhaps that the something you buy on Etsy, especially if you communicate with the creator, is kind of the embodiment of an experience. Have you made that argument? And then I'm going to call on this lady here. We have, and I think that the the object the object that you get on Etsy is a pleasure unto itself. Um, and you know a lot of times People think of Etsy as a craft site, but there's everything from furniture to clothing to greeting cards. I mean, everything like that. But you're also buying the experience of supporting a person. So my sister-in-law got married and she ordered a wedding dress from a seller in Australia. And the wedding dress was kind of already made and designed, but the, the wedding dress maker emailed her and said, what flowers are you going to have on your wedding day? 
and she emailed her some photos back of the flowers she was going to use, and the, the Australian dressmaker remade the dress a little bit so the, the flowers matched better. Mm -hmm. And you don't get that by ordering something, you know, next day prime. So how often That's an do, experience. Yeah, how often do people actually communicate with the creator rather than just buy something? Oh, people communicate with the creators um, really as a matter of course. We have a whole system on, uh, on Etsy, a messaging system called Conversations. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the purchasing itself is, is almost incidental to the interaction that you have in many cases. Um, I was going to, to Texas one time and I ordered like a Western jacket. And uh, this was when I was CTO, before I was CEO. The seller didn't know I worked at Etsy, but she emailed me and said, I have like a little Western bolo tie, and you should wear this. And she sent it to me. And then she asked me to send a photo back to her. And, and that's just a really great experience. Mm -hmm. much rooting for you guys. Awesome. Um, I was wondering what lessons you could share about building and maintaining community. Yes. I think the biggest lesson I could share is that communities are, are really chaotic and you just have to accept that. Um, you, like managing a community doesn't mean that you have kind of a perfect airtight PR plan. It means, uh, like in our case, we have user forums and uh, we've been running the user forums since the beginning. And you know, we, get, we get criticized in the user forums all the time. And uh, we see that as being very helpful. We have people in the forums, and we're always you know, talking to Etsy members. But I think the most important thing is just accepting the messiness of it. Um, I, one, of, one of the people who really inspires me is um, the, uh, Jane Jacobs, who uh, wrote a lot about urban planning. and her book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities. And the, the thing that stands out to me in reading that is she talks about kind of the chaos of the street and the messiness. She's often writing about New York, but that she calls it kind of an intricate ballet and how it all kind of works together. Uh, I think a community works that way. Um, a community isn't always praising you. A community isn't always criticizing you. Uh, it's always very real. It's like real people. It's sort of maybe an improv ballet. Anyway, improv, yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Chad. Um, I'm Greg Eden from Autodesk, also big fans of, of Etsy. Um, a few, few hours ago, Joe from Accel uh, asked everybody a question about, you know, how are you going to uh, create a company um, that really utilizes people in, in smart ways? And bravo to you for, for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, wanted to ask about uh, your demographics and what you're seeing in terms of uh, youth uh, getting engaged with Etsy and, and in your membership. And minorities. Yeah. And then just a little sure. about US versus international. Sure. So uh, inter I'll start with international. About one in four transactions crosses a border on Etsy. So um, it's, been, and it's been international since the start. The third day of Etsy was the first international transaction. Um, and what were the other questions? Sorry. Demographics, so Demographics. also minorities, oh, yeah. so age. As a, I think Etsy, like many things on the internet, had a, uh, started with a really early adopter community, places like Brooklyn and Portland. And in some ways, that's the way that people still think about Etsy. But I was just talking to someone at the conference uh, in the speaker room who came to tell me that his, uh, his father-in-law, who was over 70 years old, started sculpting um, in his retirement. And, uh, and found Etsy and saw all of the sculpture. And now he's saying that he wants to start a shop on Etsy. So there's, I think the early days of Etsy, there was um, a fairly typical, you know, urban young person on Etsy. And now it's really uh, mainstreamed in, in a lot of ways. And of course, sellers in 200 countries, it's, uh, it's, it's quite diverse. 88% women are selling on Etsy. So what about minorities in the U.S. or you know, right. maybe Palestinians and I mean just whatever. Sure. Yeah. I mean that's not something that we we track. Mm -hmm. um, but you must have a sense. Yeah. I think I mean Etsy's diverse in the sense of you know people in 200 countries. Uh, I mean we don't track. It depends on what type of minorities that you're yeah. you're talking about. Okay. Yes. 
one more and oh, oh. okay we're oh, we still seconds. have 15 seconds but there oh Nora Nora has to ask her a question quickly one more. from Nora gets a question <laughs> Nora I was say <laughs> Nora was there during the early yes. days yeah, I, I, my first desk in 2006 was actually at Etsy yes. when there were about 10 people. So I've been trying that skate ramp. <laughs> um, but my question is, so my company is Collabora, Nora I was did. Uh, my question is, so we've seen a lot of initiatives with Etsy wholesale, um, mm -hmm. changing the policy, like you just mentioned, that right. you, know, you don't have to make everything yourself. And I'm just wondering, where do you see the future of growth for Etsy? Sure. Um, after the previous panel, I think there might be an opportunity on Mars. Um, which I had not contemplated. One way, one way. Uh, when we think about the future of Etsy, I think when Etsy started, it was this really beautiful idea. You know, it was mostly about craft. Um, and as it's grown, we're really seeing this Etsy economy develop. And uh, as Nora was saying, not only do you have the Etsy marketplace where people can buy and sell from each other, uh, now we have Etsy Wholesale, where um, Etsy sellers now have their own private sort of B2B marketplace where they can sell to offline retailers. So we have um, literally thousands of retailers around the world. So if you're a seller, you can sell direct to consumer or you can sell to wholesale. And we see that as really building this Etsy economy um, and, and the in-person experience everywhere in the world. You can also sell in person in the US now. So when I think of the future of Etsy and expansion, I think, you know, given the rise of mobile and all of the offline things that we're doing, allowing our sellers to sell to wholesale and in person, that anyone walking around in the world with their mobile phone will be able to interact with a person um, and buy something from that person in a situation where they get most of the money and uh, they're supporting local business, even when they're, it feels like supporting a local business even yeah. when it's not local. So thank you yes. very much. Thanks, Esther. This was much more than a transaction <laughs> thank up you. here. I enjoyed it. Excellent. Thank you.